congratulations on this film. I had the pleasure of sitting down and watching it yesterday, and it is an absolutely fantastic film. So congratulations. Thank you so much. It, it, um, it's very gratifying to make. It was, uh, it was, uh, you know, anyone, you know, people who know film and, and know the realities of film shoots, you know, you know, have been saying to me, goodness gracious, Jonathan, you know, what, what did it take to make this damn thing? But, you know, it was, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of really experienced professionals, you know, were all involved. So it was, it was, it was an adventure. Yeah. You are such a prolific screenwriter. Where did this idea come about for you for the ice road? I saw, um, when I was a little boy, uh, my brother and I, watched Clouseau's picture The Wages of Fear with Yves Montand and and I never forgot it it was um you know it's it's it was a picture that actually was quite well known back in the 50s and 60s and and um and and it was so well known that William Friedkin remade it as Sorcerer and it just these kind of loser guys these ne'er-do-wells you know who are tasked with transporting this nitroglycerin across the mountain range. And I, 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 I just wanted to, I was always searching for some way to remake it or to do a film inspired by that. And I then watched the, the, um, the reality show, Ice Road Truckers. And, and the, the two ideas didn't congeal for, uh, obviously for years. And then it just did. It just, I, I, I just, it just clicked. I said, that's a way to do a film that's inspired by Wages of Fear, but not a, t- a remake, you know? Yeah. Um, but that's how it happened. And you don't always direct what you write, but so what made you decide with this one that you wanted to direct this one? Did you want to direct it from the very start? I did. I, I went to Code Entertainment and I said, I said, this one's near and dear to me. And I... I just, I just love that Clouseau film so much. I want to, I want to go for it on this one. And um, my directing career has, has not come out like a rifle shot. It's, it's been kind of a, a, a lengthier journey than my screenwriting career. So I was searching for the right one, and I wanted a picture where I could do a lean and mean action picture with really good actors. Um, and do something with a really tight linear storyline that has a kind of edge of your seat thing. And um, so I wanted this for myself, you know? Definitely. And it looks like it would have been a, a tough shoot, like filming out in the snow and in the ice. It looks like it would have been pretty tough. What was the, the pros and cons of being able to film in such a harsh environment? When you're doing a film like this, and especially with the with the length of the career I've had, I, I've seen really good Hollywood professionals fake just about everything. So I knew we could fake it. And generally what happens when you're faking a film like this, you take your vehicles into a soundstage and you green screen all the windows and you and then you replace the windows with the passing of the you know the ice outside the road and everything and you know you just fake it you everybody knows how to do it and you have cgi implanted um breath coming out of people's mouths when they're talking and you can always kind of tell and you can tell the green screen windows and everything but the audiences just sort of go for it and i said we okay we can do that or we can do a kind of hybrid movie we investigated making the movie on a hockey rink in Bucharest in Romania. Yep. And, and then I said, well, look, Liam Neeson's window to make the film is in February and the coldest city in North America, over 500,000 population or coldest place, the coldest city in the world. Actually, it's cold. It's colder than any place in Siberia um, is Winnipeg. And the actual ice road trucking industry is in Winnipeg. And let's start asking the authorities in Manitoba whether or not we can take real trucks out on the real Lake Winnipeg. And the answers we got back were very encouraging. So we, we, the, the two producers that I work with, Al Corley and Bart Rosenblatt, we kept looking at each other going, should we try to do this? And, and, we, and, and we slowly 
came to the conclusion we should. And, and um, so we just went for it with full commitment. You yeah. Know? Weather and extremes can cause problems for equipment. I know for myself, I've lost a camera in humid conditions. Did it cause any problems for the for the crew or for the a gear that you were using because of the extreme cold? We were shooting in 25 to 35 uh, below zero centigrade. And at those temperatures, the, the, uh, your cameras freeze. And um, thank goodness we had the local Winnipeg film crews who are probably the best in the world at keeping cameras from freezing. And um, we had natural snowfall a lot of the time, and, but they're probably the best in the world at supplying fake snowfall to fill in when we didn't have it. We, we had probably 50% real snow and 50% fake snow, um, but they're able to match it so perfectly. So they, those guys are aces. Yep. I mean, they're, fan, they're just fantastic. So I, I, I highly recommend Winnipeg as a place to shoot. Seriously, I... Definitely. Really <laughs> I know that Liam Neeson probably was used to it because of his work on the grey, but how did the, the cast go working in such extreme conditions? Or does that actually help them with their performance? Uh, it did. And it absolutely did. And I feel for the cast. I mean, the first day that Lawrence Fishburne showed up, he was out, we were out on the real um, lake. And it was, you know, it's 30 degree below Celsius, you know, and, and, you know, his jaw was freezing up and, and, uh, you know, Liam, that business where he goes in the water, that's really him. Yep. Wow. I mean, you know, he, he's in, he's in a dry suit, he's in a survival suit, but nonetheless, it, that's not a small thing. And, and, um, I, you know, the audience they, they, they get a kick out of it because, you know, so many people are, are freezing the, the film stills and, like, walking up and, like, is that, is that really Liam Neeson, you know? and Because they think it's a stunt guy, you know? Because um, everybody everybody who watches it can tell that we're out of doors and they can see that it's real snow and ice, you know? Yeah. So, um, I, I, I don't know. I'm very proud of the film that way. I like practical shoots. I like stuff that's not fake. Um it just enhances it like crazy when I watch it. So I don't know. I'm, Definitely. I'm proud of it no, it does. Yeah. It looks it looks absolutely amazing, and you can tell that it's not fake. And I think that's what makes it such a special film. Um, bringing it back to the screenwriting process, though, when did you know that you wanted Liam and Lawrence to be in those roles? Like, did you kind of write the film with those two in mind? I I didn't. I I wrote the Mike character for someone, you know. Younger, and um, it, the, you know, like like all of the way all these things progress, you send it to agents and casting directors, and you're trying kind of kind of poke around to see who's available and who might be interested in something like this. And Chris Andrews over at Creative Artists Agency, Liam's agent, long long term agent, looked at it and to Liam, and we got a very pleasant phone call saying that Liam. Um, it was very interested. And so I flew to New York and sat with Liam and he, Liam loved the brother story yeah. and he, he loved the brother story and he loved the sort of page turning nature of the script. And, he, and, and we got on like a house of fire and he, he committed to it. So I, that the project and then Lawrence Fishburne had a small window where he could do it. So we had to consolidate his days, but the idea of having Lawrence in that role, because it's such a, um, you know, he's a legend, you know, these are, these guys are, they're screen legends, you know, both of them. Yep. And, um, it, it just allowed, it just, there were two anchor points, if you will, for the film. And it allowed us to be more flexible with the other casting. So, talking of that other casting, Marcus and Amber are both fantastic in this. Amber is going to be an absolute star. I can see that. Um, where did you discover those two? Because they are just absolutely perfect for their roles. I'd, I'd love to. Marcus is uh, had done some work before, but I worked with Marcus uh, on a film called Kill the Irishman, and I I I pushed Marcus like crazy, and I even. I had I didn't have to sell it with Liam, but I did have to bring it up. I said, "Look, I want to go with a relatively unknown for this because I don't want 
uh, a a Hollywood actor to bring the baggage of his films into this role. I, I, I don't want an audience to look at an actor acting. I, I want the suspension of disbelief to be so good that you actually think that this guy is really him. And, and Liam was loved the idea. And I am so proud of Marcus Thomas because what he did is very, very hard to do. Um, and, and Amber, I can't take credit for discovering her. She'd been around. Noah Hawley had cast her in this television show, and she was getting rave reviews, and I looked at her. But I did a casting call with every single indigenous actress, Native American actress, and Amber, Amber just won. Uh, she just beat them all out, and I am immensely proud of Amber Midthunder. I think she's emerged as a star from... I can say that The Ice Road has really promoted her as an international film star, international action star. She she was just cast as the lead in predator and uh, amber is kind of the next big thing and i i'm just uh i'm thrilled for her definitely well jonathan i know we are running out of time very very quickly but i just had two very quick questions first of all the action sequences in this film they look absolutely spectacular what were they like to direct and and how did you come up with these original ideas? Because with films like Fast and Furious, we've seen so many stunts with cars and trucks over the years. How did you make those original? We just decided, unlike Fast and Furious, which I'm a, I'm a fan of, and these and the Bond series and these other things that feature vehicular mayhem, so much of that stuff is enhanced. It's enhanced with CGI, enhanced with ramps, enhanced, enhanced with this. We said, no, we're going to do everything real, um, like really real, like um, completely unenhanced. And that's what that's. We just stuck to our plan. We stuck to our guns. It's like, how crazy can we get with real stunt guys? And um, when we're opening the doors here, that's that's. That's really Liam Neeson sitting there. So we had the cabs mounted on Ford 550 pickup trucks with a stunt driver right below. And, um, you know, it was hairy. Um, but that's how we did it. Um, and I'm very glad we did it that way. Definitely. And to finish off, Jonathan, this is a fantastic film. What would you like to say to all of our listeners out there before they head out to see The Ice Road in cinemas? Um, well, if you like a no, no nonsense action thriller um, with really good acting um, and a satisfying ending, this is a picture for you. And um, I followed uh, the taste of Australian film fans for many years. I've been doing this for 30 years. And um, I love Australian film fans. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> 